What is up, everybody? Solomon here. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic Tuesday. There is a lot of news that came out today out of the Philippines. There is a lot of news coming out of Israel today as far as their stock exchange integrating with blockchain. We have Western Union news that ties in with RippleNet as well. And I do have some Hedera Hashgraph information, which I found that was pretty interesting. So to start off, uh, Ripple Swell, their regionals um, are today, if you're not aware, July 29th, 2020. So they were private and tried logging in there, but was not able to get onto uh, the webcast. However, uh, if you want to give XRP underscore Stuart a follow, if you are on Twitter, he already posted some of the panelists. If you have Twitter, I would recommend going to his Twitter and looking into that information, and he may post some more information. Otherwise, we may see some information coming out shortly regardless. So today we have MasterCard collaborates with Microsoft to accelerate innovation across digital commerce and startup ecosystems. If you're not aware, Microsoft Azure obviously supports RippleNet, but it supports other blockchain initiatives as well. So I don't wanna make it seem like they're just tied into Ripple because they're tied into others as well. Um, Microsoft's, uh, one, of their, one of their leads though, I know did say that um, RippleNet would basically underpin everything this was years ago, though, so take that however you want to take it. Now, on Tuesday, MasterCard and Microsoft Corp announced a co uh, collaboration to shape the future of digital commerce, drive startup innovation, and enable financial inclusion. Collaboration will accelerate MasterCard Lab's cloud-native research and development activities, enabled by Azure and AI to advance MasterCard Lab's mission to de-risk and commercialize emerging technologies and platforms for digital commerce. Now, this is just kind of generic news. This is the government of New South Wales. They put out a document today about changing the landscape. This is from their treasury. Uh, it talks about COVID-19 has increased digitization, which we've been talking about on this channel quite a bit. I know many people in the digital asset space have been talking about it. And it talks about in the current climate of disruption and uncertainty, new situations often arise that were not anticipated at the time regulations were drafted. Emerging technologies such as AI, blockchain, and autonomous vehicles are rapidly bringing new products and services to markets and disrupting traditional business models. This leads to instances where regulators must play a game of catch-up, often called the pacing problem. So not a whole lot more about blockchain in there, but it's just telling, it's telling us that we, we need to, or they need to um, just re revamp how they're regulating these um, new technologies. I found this today, which was pretty interesting to me. This is General, uh, General Electric, which is obviously huge. And uh, this is from 2018. This is blockchain with small world and energy networks. This is about upgrading the, uh, the energy grids. And, you know, it talks about this infinite chain in here, uh, blockchain implementations, uh, Ripple, the world's only enterprise blockchain solution for global payments, and Amazon blockchain templates. And I'll take this with a grain of salt because they are just talking about existing blockchain technologies available. But it was still interesting that they had this in here. And then even down below talks about the uh, the future energy grid. So I've seen other documents similar to this uh, actual trials regarding Hadera Hashgraph and the Department of Defense. Um, I think it was the Secretary of the Navy and some military academy individuals too, but this just goes to show you what, where, the, where these technology providers' heads are at, um, even from a grid standpoint. Uh, this is GE, this is just small world uh, core. If anybody wants to look into this a little bit more, maybe you'll find more information that I haven't. Now, the presenter of this is this Field Consulting and Services Incorporated, and they look like they are a software integrator for GE or General Electric's Energy, uh, General Electric Energy Small World. So interesting stuff there. Now we get a little bit more into the relevant news for Ripple. And now today, and I'm not saying this is directly tied in with Ripple, uh, but Philippines rolls out a distributed ledger technology based platform for bond distribution. Now, this is the Philippine Bureau of the Treasury in cooperation with the Union Bank of the Philippines. Union Bank of the Philippines, I believe, has been a rumored ODL user. Um, I have not seen anything concrete on that. Correct me if I'm wrong. And Philippine Digital Asset Exchange, PDAX, uh, launched a platform for distribution of retail treasury bonds based on distributed ledger technology. 
Now this is called bond, uh, bonds.ph. Um, this is the website if you feel like wanting to go to this and maybe take a browse around here, it's pretty interesting. But you get into it, PDAX does support XRP, it supports Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, uh, as well as some others. Now, we get into this, um, wait, hold on here, let me find this. Okay, this is, uh, this is today. Western Union expands in the Philippines with Cebuana Lulie and Western Union, a global leader in cross-border, cross-currency money movements and payments and Cebuana Lulie. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, please correct me. I've always been curious about how to pronounce Cebuana Lulie. Um, cross-currency money and movements, the largest, or Cebuana Lulie, the largest and long, long-tenured microfinancial service provider in the Philippines have come together to enable customers in the Philippines to send and receive Western Union money transfers. Significant collaboration with Sabuana Lulie adds 2,500 more locations to Western Union's global network. And we, we do know that Western Union is still testing um, RippleNet, uh, I believe XRP as well as, as early as, or as late as January or February of this year. The world's fourth largest remittance receiving country is the Philippines. Money transfer customers accessing Sabuana Lulie's network branch will be able to send or receive money via Western Union's global network in more than 200 countries and territories. More services are supposed to be rolled out in the next coming weeks, which we'd be, will be interesting. Now, this is Sabuana Lulie with around 2,500 branches and over 200 partners adopts Ripple's blockchain. So there is a, you know, this is a crypto news website, but this is a legit piece of news here. I just... There were a bunch of video ads popping up on the other one, so I didn't want to post that one. Um, so Sabuana Lulie, we do need, utilizes X Current, which is basically the equivalent of Swift GPI, which is financial messaging. Uh, we do know that X Current obviously is now rolled into um, on-demand liquidity. Um, doesn't mean you have to use XRP, but this is also interesting, which is RippleNet member Coins PH, and now Coins PH is on-demand liquidity enabled XRP. To leverage Union Bank's new Philippine remittance network. This is just last month, June 23rd, 2020. So all this stuff really starts to tie together. You see these institutions and these banks making these moves. And if you look into it, I mean, there's, there's moves that I feel like are all in tandem together. They're not just random. So they're attacking the Philippine quarter, corridor right now, it, it appears. Uh, at least as far as what Union Bank and Western Union are trying to do. Uh, Union Bank is obviously located in the Philippines, so that would make sense for them to do that. Um, now, this is really the big piece of news that I think is relevant today. And if you look into the relationships with Israel's stock exchange and their technology providers, it's very, it, it gets more interesting. So Israel's stock exchange says it's launching a blockchain platform for securities lending. Now, this is the Tel Aviv stock exchange, which is um, an acronym is just TAZE for it. Now, if we go into TAZE here, it actually, I, I believe it does say, yeah, blockchain facilitates peer-to-peer -peer trading in escrow, blah, blah, blah. Integrated and tested since March of 2020. So they've been testing just like everybody else has been testing. Here's the actual article from their uh, website. Now we get into this here, okay? Now, Tel Aviv Stock Exchange Accenture, who is a RippleNet integrator, and The Floor, um, you'll see who The Floor here is in a second. They're the ones that constructed this securities lending blockchain. You go to The Floor's platform website here, Shaping the Bank of the Future Today. Their partners really stuck out to me. Um, they're partnered with uh, Royal Bank of Scotland. They are partnered with Santander. They are partner, partnered with uh, Sumitomo Mitsui, which is SMBC, which is a giant conglomerate as far as banking is concerned. They are partnered with Intesa San Paolo and also HSBC. Let's dive into the floor's partnerships here. If you're not aware, Sumitomo Mitsui is um, a partner of SBI Japan. And if we go into the SBI Japan or the SBI um, investor presentation from April 28th of 2020, or at least announced on that date, this is this mega bank group with SBI Holdings, Sumitomo Mitsui Financial Group, Sumitomo Mitsui Bank, SMBC Nico Securities, tied in with SBI Holdings. Right down below, in addition to a capital investment by Sumitomo Mitsui Bank into MoneyTap, which runs on RippleNet, 
The SMBC group has also been in discussions towards the immediate util immediate utilization and diffusion of the distributed ledger, distributed ledger technology platform in the trade finance field through a capital participation in SBI R3 Japan. Now we get into this here. If I can zoom in on this for you guys a little bit. Now, what's interesting to me is that you see all of these financial institutions that are tied in with SWIFT GPI that are also in parallel testing with um, digital assets, XRP, R3, et cetera. We know R3 is um, obviously GPI as well. Now this was from 2017. The implication of the trial is that digital assets such as XRP, which enable near real-time value exchange anywhere in the world, offer a lower cost alternative to Nostro accounts. Our three member banks involved in the trial included Barclays, BMO Financial Group, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, Intesa San Paolo, Macquarie Group, National Australia Bank, so we, we saw an Intesa San Paolo up there, right? Um, Royal Bank of Canada, Santander, Scotiabank, and Westpac. In the trial, the banks used the Ripple network to make markets for fiat currencies using XRP, completing authenticated payments without multiple Nostro accounts. Through a series of transactions, the participating banks explored how Ripple Solution and XRP could enable both cost-cutting opportunities and revenue opportunities. David Rutter, R3's CEO, comments, the tradition of holding numerous currencies across multiple accounts in different countries is costly and inefficient. This is a legacy issue from a time when the technology did not exist to offer a viable alternative. However, uh, digital assets and distributed ledgers can now enable real-time exchange of currencies between parties anywhere in the world without the need for a third-party intermediary. This prototype paves the way for a major, major overhaul of how banks process and settle cross-border payments. We obviously know Santander's RippleNet. You can see it right here. Um, their OnePay FX platform runs on Ripple. And they've actually went open market with Pago FX, which I believe still runs on Ripple, but have not, I don't, I don't believe they've announced that it has though yet. So now we have Royal Bank of Scotland here. I have not seen this document actually. This was, I believe from 2018. We continue to focus on new ways of working together across the bank and with others. Ripple code spike collabor or collaboration. Now this is Ripple, disruptive international currency payment technology. This code spike was a three-day intensive collaboration uh, in TSC, which aimed to explore Ripple technology and set aimed to explore Ripple's technology and set that technology up on the Royal Bank of Scotland's infrastructure right there in black and white. Brought together four expert teams from across banks, developed insight into how we could turn this into an opportunity, validated our understanding of how we could use the technology, achieved a huge amount in two days presented ideas to a range of business stakeholders on day three, and will reuse the model due to success. All right, and you see again here, this is more recent. This is from, I think, 2019 here. Um, this is a collaboration example with Ripple. All right, now I wanted to get into this just a little bit. This is Hashgraph, so uh, if, you're, if you're interested in Hedera, the, you know, I, I find this interesting. I haven't seen this Antiva token yet. This is existing T DLTs like blockchain may serve the aforementioned goals, but there are concerns about transaction speeds, data storage, and fairness. Accordingly, Intiva Health has partnered with Swirls, the creator, and I, I found something actually really interesting with Hashgraph at the very end of this. Um, partnered with Swirls, uh, Swirls is the parent company of uh, Hedera, basically. The creator of Hashgraph technology, a revolutionary improvement in the DLT space. You can look into this. This is um, basically this ready doc by Intiva Health. Um, and it basically uh, lines up uh, Intiva Health to leverage Swirl's Hashgraph to build the industry and build the industry's first integrated career platform for healthcare professionals. So that was cool, I thought. What really I thought was interesting, though, and I just found this today, this was just posted in June of 2020. It looks like they're investigating the use of Hedera Hashgraph into integration into um, road safety initiatives. Uh, integrating Internet of Things and blockchain for ensuring road safety. Uh, obviously, Hashgraph is not blockchain, but this is all about Hashgraph. This whole thing is about Hashgraph. An unconventional approach. I mean, if I, if I do a targeted search here, 
there's 68 uh 68 keystrokes that that hit uh that hit hashgraph um and it basically talks you know there's there's still some work to be done it looks like but there's some promising results here as far as road safety is concerned with uh hedera hashgraph you always have to pay attention everybody to to what where what sites are actually posting this information i had no idea what ncbi is dot nlm dot dot gov what's pretty crazy is it like um ncbi is basically like molecular biology all this crazy stuff um and then you get into nih.gov it's a you know it's a governmental organization national institute of health so Hope you guys like this video. Uh, for everybody that uh, wants to see this as far as Hashgraph is concerned, I'm gonna post this in the Telegram. I'll post this link on Twitter as well because I know you guys, uh, I know you guys get a lot of news, but maybe you have not seen this before. And um, I think that the uh, the Israel blockchain initiative is extremely interesting. I think that all of the news coming uh, out of the Philippines today, and even some of the tie-ins with um, SBI Japan, as far as the partners of the uh, the Israel Blockchain Initiative are concerned, They're, everything's just. I'm I'm really curious to see if anything comes out of Swell, um, the Swell Regional from today. So I hope you guys all have a great evening, enjoy your night, and I will see you tomorrow if there is news to present. Thanks. Bye.